Hi and welcome once again to Channel Fish. In this video we are going to discuss the physical features that you typically see on topographic maps. So if you don't know anything about topographic maps yet, then I suggest that you go and watch the previous video I posted where I discuss the basics. But if you think you are familiar with the basics and if you think you have enough background knowledge, stay tuned. First thing we are going to look at are different types of slopes and what is indicated on your left is a steep slope and on your right there's a gentle slope so how do we know a, a slope is steep it's when these contour lines are quite closely packed together and it makes sense because if you look at the number 100 and this number 200 the contour interval here by the way is 20 so we go from 100 to 120 to 140 and it doesn't require us to go a long distance so in other words we just travel a short distance in order to get to 120 meters whereas on this side we see how we have to travel quite a long distance to get to the next level so or well not the next level but simply to 120 meters and that is why it's a gentle slope but I'm going to show you uh, things from a different perspective and so um, these contour lines, like we said, they connect places with exactly the same height. So they're always going to be straight when you look at it from the side or when you uh, look at a cross section. And if you'd like to know what a cross section is and how to draw your own cross section, go look in the description where there's a link to one of my other videos where I explain step by step how to draw your own cross section. So this is not an exact cross section of this contour map uh, that you see over here it's just to give you an idea it's more or less but not exactly the same and so here we can see the lines quite closely packed together that's why we have a steep slope but there the lines are further spread apart and that's why we have a gentle slope and so here we see a concave slope a concave slope is a slope where you have contour lines far apart at the bottom of the slope or let's say at the foot of the mountain or the hill and as we go higher they are more densely packed together and so concave slope looks like this from the side there you can see the concave slope from the side and let's look at the two uh, pictures put together as we can see there they they start out wide at the bottom uh, and then they, they are more densely packed as we go to the top and I remember my teacher told me uh, how to remember this concave has an A and the A will help us there these two lines are far apart at the bottom of the A just like the contour lines and as you go to the top uh, of the hill they are more closely packed so these two lines come closer as we go to the top of the A and uh, now we're going to move on to a convex slope so a convex slope is a slope that has the contour lines closely packed at the bottom or at the foot of the hill or the mountain and as we go to the top they are spread further apart and so concave uh, sorry a convex slope looks like this from the side and here's your two pictures put together and how do we remember this we use the A for concave we're going to use a V for convex so if we look at this V the two lines are close together they, they even touch the at the bottom but we're not going to focus on that so the two lines are quite close together at the bottom the contour lines are closely packed at the bottom of the hill right and as we go to the top of the hill they are spread out further so it's the same with the V and that's how you remember the difference between convex and concave now we're going to move on to a hill so a hill is a very simple uh, feature on a contour map or a topograph topographic map so it looks like this from the top the circular lines and then if you look at it from the side this is what it looks like the cross section effect looks like this so I think by now all of you should should have a feeling or at least an idea of how to interpret 
uh, contour maps when you look at it what we have here is a valley and this is an example of a valley and then also what I would like you to pay attention to are these bottom sections of the mountains and these are called spurs and we are going to discuss this topic later in the video so what we have are these contour lines and you can see they are forming a V right now the point of the V points to the source of the river so if the source of the river is up here then the river will flow down in this direction so here we have a hundred meters 120 140 so you can imagine how this land is shaped now please take note that when you look at these contour lines you'll notice that they are reasonably close together which means there is a steepish slope and it tells us that it is the upper end of the valley it's also called a young valley sometimes but when we go down the river to the lower parts of the valley that's where we have a reasonably even surface so if we go back to the picture we saw earlier this is a typical example as I said of a valley and what you see on your screen is a contour map of a similar type of valley it's not the valley in the picture it's just a very similar valley in the sense that the slope is very gentle and the contour lines are more dispersed so it might be slightly more challenging to identify a valley where the lines are so dispersed next we have a mesa now a mesa is almost like a hill but the top is flat and there we see what the mesa looks like from the side uh, the the cross-section perspective looks like this and there you can see the top is quite flat and uh, what you should remember something I haven't mentioned yet is that if this is there we see 140 so this is 160 so if this line is 160 meters above sea level then everything above this is below 180 and how do we know that we know it because the contour interval is 20 meters but we don't have another contour line above this one so if this line is 160 then everything above this is higher than 160 but it's lower than 180 now a physical feature that I nearly forgot to include in this video is called a plateau now what is a plateau firstly I'm gonna use this uh, picture of the Mesa to explain it but you must think large scale a plateau is a vast area it's it's very very big we're talking hundreds and even thousands of kilometers so the plateau is that top section that you see and then what we have is the escarpment it's where the land rises so the escarpment is the place that separates high-lying areas and low-lying areas and how it works is at the bottom section is normally where we have coastal areas but then from there as we move inland what we typically see is that the land rises and then the interior the the central parts of the land away from the the ocean is where the land is much higher now we have a volcano and as we all know a volcano is like a hill with a hole at the top and you will know when you see a volcano on a map when you see these hatch marks these are what we call hatch marks and how it works is as follows so we have a hundred there 120 140 160 how do we know the height of this line with the hatch marks indicated it's quite simple if this is 140 the contour interval is 20 so this is 160 then this line is 160 again now it is possible to have another circular line in there with hatch marks and then that would be 140 because now we are going down into the ground so this is how a volcano is indicated and the next physical feature is a bit more complicated what we have here are spurs so 
this is what we call a spur this area as well as this um, area over here and this one there so we have three spurs and how I'm going to explain this to you is that at the bottom or at the foot of a mountain you will see these toe-like uh, formations I think you can all remember one of the previous slides when we have these lines making a V shape then it points to the source of the river so once again there might be a river it might not always be there but after a good shower of rain you'll see uh, a river flowing down right there okay so our next physical feature is what we call a depression and it's basically a hole in the ground so similar to the volcano you'll see these hatch marks and once again uh, we are going down instead of up it could be an excavation site of some sort but it's quite simple it's basically a hole in the ground next we have a ridge and a ridge is similar to a spur in a certain way but there are a few differences the first difference I notice is that a ridge is thinner it's also like a, a, a toe-like formation but it's more like a finger pointing in a certain direction so it's thinner the slopes are a lot steeper and here you can see the contour lines quite densely packed that's where the, the, the slopes are quite steep but I'm going to show you a picture quickly and uh, please take note that this is not a physical photo of the contour map it's just to give you an idea what these things look like and there you can see the very very steep slopes it's very thin along the top of the ridge but still it gives you a good idea of, of what it looks like now just to make it practical I'm going to flip the contour map vertically just to show you a few similarities and there we can see how it's pointed it's pointing down in the same way that the ridge in the photo points down and so this is uh, basically what a ridge is but let's move on the next physical feature is a saddle firstly we know that these are the lower lying areas so we're going to go up from 100 there's 200 we're going even higher and then this is like a hill right but there we go down again and then we go up again we will see what it looks like from the side so please note that the saddle is that dip in the middle our last physical feature for today's video is a cliff now what is a cliff a cliff is a vertical drop so it's where the contour lines touch if we look at the first example you'll see about three of these uh, contour lines touching and so there's a vertical drop there and as you can also see this is a plateau so it's an example of where the escarpment rises vertically and then over here we have a sea cliff so it's where there's a vertical drop straight into the ocean and the third example is where you will see a waterfall and it makes sense because these two contour lines touch in other words there's a vertical drop and then also remember how these contour lines point to the origin of the river so it's going down this way so these are all the physical features for today please remember to keep practicing it will become easier as you get more practice then if you have a question or any feedback please don't hesitate to pop it down in the comment section below and also feel free to subscribe See you next time. Goodbye.